You've got questions? She's got answers. It's Ask Nurse Lisa. Hey everyone, Nurse Lisa here. We're going to do a little bit something different here on Ask Nurse Lisa. You can still send in your questions and I will still be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. But on today's show, we're going to start a new segment and it's basically going to be nursing stories. In other words, it's going to be a vlog about my most memorable patients and experiences as a nurse. I always get lots of questions um, during my lifetime regarding those sorts of things. So I thought that I would spend some of the time on the show in the future with those. So this is the first one of those, so I hope that you enjoy and I'm going to start off with a doozy because this particular patient was a turning point in my life and there will be other patients that were turning points too in my life and career but this was one of the first ones. Before I changed my major from music to nursing I went and got my certification as a nurse aide, nurse assistant so that I could work in a facility and I figured that if I was changing my major from music to nursing I'd better know what was really involved with being a nurse and so that's what I did. The certification class and course did not take that long as it does now. The state is more involved in that process now than it was back when I was young. In fact, I was so young, I was 19 years old and had been in college for about a year and a half as a music major, got very sick with pneumonia and uh, put the music on hold because I couldn't exactly do opera um, due to the damage in my lungs. Anyway, I got a wonderful job at a local hospital which was a little bit more desirable than working at a long-term care type facility in nursing home for lack of a better term. I did get training at a long-term care facility but I really wanted to to work in a regular everyday hospital and I thought that that would give me more the kind of experience that I wanted to know if I really wanted to go all the way through um, a nursing bachelor's degree program. One night I had only, it was at work, and I had only been working as a nurse aide probably a month and a half, maybe two months, and things were not going too well. Um, some of the charge nurses that I worked with, they didn't like me. Um, they would say things like, don't tell the patient what their blood pressure is, and I was only 19. I wasn't very professional. I was just learning all of these things. And for some reason, they didn't want me to be the one that told what their blood pressure was, even though when you take a patient's blood pressure in the hospital, nine times out of ten, they're going to ask you what it is. But they really didn't have any other complaints with me. I think that they just thought that I was very, very immature, which I was at 19. I had just gotten married and, and things like that, so I really didn't know what was going on in the real world, trust me. I had uh, been living in some kind of a bubble until then. One night, though, because I worked the 3 to 11 shift, and one night uh, the nurse in charge uh, grabbed me and she said, this lady has been calling and calling over the intercom at the nurse's station for a band-aid. So she hands me a band-aid and tells me to go bring it to the patient. This was an experienced nurse, an RN, and I don't know why that she didn't think that that was a strange request that the patient was calling, you know, over the intercom to, to receive a band-aid several times. But 
I walked into the room and basically received the shock of my life. I walked into the room and there was just blood all over the place and I was very frightened because I had my brain had no idea what had gone on and my brain went into this sort of shock and I said wow I need to find out where all this blood came from it's like I wasn't scared I wasn't in a hurry my mind just took over in this weird methodical thinking and it was just very very strange um, the patient was a middle-aged woman she was a critical care RN at the biggest hospital in the area, the county hospital. And she had been admitted for depression and I really didn't know anything about this patient because I had, she was not one of the patients that I had been assigned to. But the floor that I worked on was half psych and half men surge. So we got all kinds of people with depression and then we got people with liver cancer. I mean, we just got the gamut of it on that floor. There was not a full floor connected or dedicated to psych. But that was the diagnosis of this woman that she had been diagnosed with depression and she was being monitored and I guess she was having medications started on her. Basically what this RN did, this very intelligent middle-aged woman, she had a razor blade brought to her either from home or somewhere like that. I mean an actual blade, you know, not a razor where you can't get to the blades. But she um, literally had a razor blade and she went into the bathroom there in her hospital room and she cut in the midsection of her arm, in the middle of her arm, and cut a big square where her brachial artery is, the main artery that's in your arm that you can feel pulsing as you touch the middle of your arm. So she took the razor blade and took a big hunk, a big square literally, out of her arm and she allowed it to bleed out into the trash can over two pints of blood. I mean, the trash can had an enormous amount of blood and she did this until she could not hardly stand so when she got very very lightheaded due to the rapid and extreme loss of blood at this time she started faltering around and, and was unable to stand up and somewhere or another she decided that you know she needed to go lay back down in her bed and so hence, in her attempt to try to get back to her bed, there was basically blood on the floor, on the bed, on the walls, everywhere. I mean, it was just literally everywhere like a crime scene. What made it deeply strange is that this hospital was kind of trying to do things new. <laughs> it was 1980 and this hospital was trying to do things new. And by new, I mean they didn't dress the nurses in white. Uh, the nurses, the LVNs, and the nurse aides all had different color-coded uniforms. Um, and the patients' beds, the sheets were not white. They were literally canary yellow. To continue the story, when I walked over to her, my mind was in some kind of strange mode where all I was concerned about was how did this happen? What had just happened here? And where is all this blood coming? And she had this weird, esoteric, often another planet smile to her face. And she pulled the arm out from under the sheet and I could see where all the blood was coming from. Instead of getting grossed out or panicking or anything like that, my mind was still in this weird shock mode. And so what I proceeded to do was calmly, rationally, walk outside the patient's room, get every nurse, 
nearby and I've pulled them and I've, I've pulled at them so hard I probably bruised them and I had that look on my face like get the hell away from what you're doing and come with me right now and I would be slowly talking to them about what was going on and basically we got her stitched up take, taken care of, we saved her life um, it was very low key but the reason why she's a very memorable patient for me is because that was the night that I think I actually sort of grew up. Um, after she was sent to surgery and, you know, they did a little bit of repair on the artery and stuff, um, the head nurse sat down and talked to me and she said, Lisa, she said, if I'm ever in an accident, if I'm ever in need of someone to take care of me in an emergency, I hope that you are there for me. She literally said those things to me and, and another nurse uh, came and hugged me and, and basically said the same thing. So basically I didn't get fired, I got treated with respect and I got a feeling inside me that yes I could go and finish the nursing program at the university and get my bachelor's degree and I could actually handle emergency situations so a part of me changed that night. I will have more stories in the future of, of memorable patients and uh, things like that. And as usual, if you have a question for Nurse Lisa, just write asknurselisa at yahoo.com and I will get that message. Send it in a video form so that I can have you on the next edition of Ask Nurse Lisa. And don't be afraid of what questions you ask because we've had some doozies so far on everything from flatulence to male issues. Uh, we know just about everything. So don't be afraid. Have a little fun with it. Have a little creativity about it. And we'll have you featured here on the show. Take a little time to see some of the past questions that people have asked. And if there's something that you would like covered on the show, just let me know because I'm always here to answer your questions and to point you in the right direction if you need help. In other words, maybe send you to somebody who, who knows the answer better than I do. Anyway, till next week, I'm Nurse Lisa and you've been watching Ask Nurse Lisa here on YouTube.